today we're going to be talking about Justice League. Now, we're not talking about Justice League, I believe it was 2017, we're not talking about the movie, we're going to be talking about the cartoon uh, that aired from between 2001 and 2004. Uh, so right off the bat, you know how we do, up front and blunt, uh, this show is great, it's fantastic. Um, it's everything that you want a cartoon to be. It's not stupid, or like, okay, let me rephrase. <laughs> it's not needlessly stupid, it's funny, it's entertaining, it has, like, it has a thing or two about morals and ethics in it, and um, it's just entertaining, it's good. Um, so, let's get into it a little bit. Why am I covering a cartoon? Um, so obviously this is going to, this is comic book genre or superhero content, so I'm going to, uh, that's part of why I'm covering it. But the other reason why is, um, I saw it on, Dis on DC Universe, which is a streaming service uh, where you can watch TV, movies, uh, read comic books. Um, and I saw it on there and I was like, I want to watch this. So I did. And um, it's completely remastered to HD, so everything looks clean and crisp. Uh, everything loads well, the subtitles are on point. Um, but it made me think of something my dad said once. And what my dad said was he loved Voltron as a kid. He loved it. He was one of his favorite cartoons or whatever. But when he went to go watch it as an adult, even though it was HD remastered, it didn't hold up to what his childhood, like what he remembered from his childhood. So I was like, okay, well, keeping that in mind, I, I'll watch this show and I'll see, you know, maybe I'll do a review on it to see if it held up. And um, in my personal opinion, it did. It held up uh, very well. And I think it's doing things that a lot of modern media is doing wrong. And uh, I just wanted to make a video about that, talk about it a little bit. And maybe you watched part of this or like a good chunk of it, or maybe all of it as a kid and you haven't seen it in a long time. And maybe this will make you want to rewatch it. Or if you've never seen it before, maybe my perspective will be like, okay, well, maybe I do want to go watch that cartoon. Um, so the other thing I wanted to address right away is this show was made, right? It was made for children and normies. Now, what do I mean by that? So if you watch my very first video ever, <laughs> that seems like so long ago now. Um, if you watch my first video, I went over terms like normies, um, like actual fans, and uh, I think casuals was the one in the middle. So normies, right, don't know anything. They'll go on Google to look something up about a character. Um, normies are typically the people that will just Google something and act like they're an expert on it or try to inform you on what they read in an article somewhere. Um, and a lot of times normies are the ones working for these online blog posts like Screen Rant, comicbook.com and things like that. They're not actual fans. They're just out there to put something out, like to, to just throw knowledge out there just because they can. Um, so in the context of what we're talking about right now, children and normies, this show was made to be like a segue into getting into like the superhero genre. So you'd watch this as a kid and then you'd be like, okay, maybe I do want to read some comic books or your parents would be watching it or see you watching it and they'd get, actually get interested in it. And then they themselves would go and maybe get into comic books or explore the genre some more, play some video games, watch some other movies, that kind of thing. Um, so keep that in mind as we're going through this. Um, I'm going to talk about some differences from between the comics and the show a little bit, but not too much because that's not the point. But um, so yeah, moving on from there, let's go over the story arcs really quick. So the first uh, story arc and the last story arc of the first season are three episodes each. Um, that's kind of like just a, the first one is obviously to build up why they came together and kind of like moving forward how they became a team. And then the last one is more of like a setup for season two. Um, now, I believe um, in an interview, they stated that they wanted to do the season endings in such a way that if the show got canceled, they could just end it there. They could just leave it. But if it did get picked up, they could still move forward with the story. So nothing was supposed to be conclusive. Um, so moving forward from that, every story arc in the show is two episodes. Not, no one story is contained to just one episode, with the exception of the, the Christmas episode in season two. Um, so I think that's important to understand because um, it's kind of like the theme of the show really is like they're every story arc is like more or less team up episodes that last over two episodes so they can tell a full story right because this is cartoon network when uh 2000 early 2000s when they were full of commercials and things like that so episodes were only 17 minutes long maybe 20 something if you they ran a bit long um so they did two part episodes to kind of like extend it and tell the full story which i really appreciate that looking back um so 
So yeah, um, and this is a fun trivia fact. And I once I read this on IMDb, I started paying more attention to the show as I was watching it. And for the most part, in the majority of the episodes, all seven members are like never present. Like I'm at the same time, I should say. So usually it'll be at least one or two members of the of the league missing from the episode. And I think they do that to avoid overcrowding and things like that. Now, as I, as I dig a little bit more digging, um, I found out that there is, at, t at, uh, at the time, certain characters that DC just wasn't allowing them to use. That's why in season two, you get some weird named Thanagarian because they couldn't use Hawkman at the time. So I think that's pretty interesting. And it gives me a little bit of perspective on why they may have changed some of the villains the way they did. Um, so... Uh, another reason on why this cartoon is aged so well, uh, not only did they do a great job remastering it, but also the show, I think a lot of cartoons or just like more adult TV shows, I should say, uh, try to focus or try to include some kind of political or societal issue when it's more or less proven and shown that that doesn't age well over time. Like you're not going to go back to that as much as you would something else that's like an independent story. And I think that's what makes Justice League pretty good and unique, is it doesn't try to focus on any one thing. They introduce issues, but it has nothing to do with race, gender, or politics, or anything crazy like that. It's just, here's an issue, and here's a story about it, and here's how the heroes are gonna deal with it. And that kind of innocent uh, storytelling is what really um, makes comic books so enjoyable. And now, there's plenty of arguments that certain things were intended to be a mirror of uh, global events, and majority of them are flat out wrong. Um, a big example that comes to mind is X-Men against the Brotherhood, uh, Xavier and Magneto, supposed to be mirroring Martin Luther King and uh, Malcolm X. That is flat out wrong. Stanley himself said that that was not the case, that was not the issue, that was not the point of the Brotherhood and the X-Men. If you don't believe me, you can go out and do some research for yourself, but it's blatantly wrong. So the idea that comic books or um, these things that we're supposed to be using for enjoyment are supposed to be mirroring society is just wrong. It's simple as that. This cartoon is evidence of that. This cartoon is aged so well because it doesn't depend on society to tell a narrative. Um, so moving past that, um, one of the episodes I really wanted to go out of my way to point out is uh, the wild card episode. Now, I'm not going to give you the ending of the story or the ending of the series for that matter because I really want you to be able to go out and watch it for yourself and still give you a full in-depth review. Um, so the wild card episode is in season two and it's the last story arc before they go into the three season fin or three episode finale. This episode is about Joker hiding bombs around like what I, I think is Las Vegas or some kind of equivalent and the Justice League has to go through and find it. And the Joker unleashes the Royal Flush Gang to go out and fight them. Now, why is this so important? I feel like this is important, or not important, but it's, it's, it's a fun episode because it's run by the Joker. Things are mostly being told from his perspective on like what's happening with the heroes and he's cutting from hero to hero, explaining their situations and kind of making fun of them. That in only way, or in the only way that, the, or only in a way, excuse me, that the Joker can do. Um, and I think that's really fun and enjoyable. It makes for a really good episode. Um, and then there's the Royal Flush Gang themselves. So this is part of the re why the reason, or uh, part of the reason why uh, I enjoyed this episode so much is because the Royal Flush Gang is voiced by the same cast that plays the Teen Titans, which I thought was just awesome. I thought it was hilarious. As soon as they started talking, I was like, oh my gosh, that's great. Um, so I really enjoyed that and I thought that was really cool. Because at the time of this cartoon, uh, about the time it was wrapping up, 2004, uh, the Teen Titans cartoon had just started airing in 2003. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that was like the main episode I really wanted to point out because I enjoyed it so much. Uh, another episode, I kind of, I'm forgetting the name right now because I didn't write it down. But basically, if you've ever seen the Crisis on Two Earths uh, DC animated movie, it came out a, a long time ago, I think 2006. Uh, basically, the Justice League on another planet, or another parallel world, comes to our world and fights our Justice League, or maybe vice versa. Or, it was vice versa. Our Justice League goes to their world, because on that world, the Justice League are all bad guys. It's Ultraman, it's Superwoman, and they're all evil. Um, basically, this episode is pretty much the same thing. Um, Lex Luthor 
Well, it's implied that the Flash was killed in action somehow, and that's the part of the tipping point for the Justice League. Uh, Superman kills Lex Luthor, they start lobotomizing their villains and like cleaning up Arkham Asylum so it looks like a nice place to live or whatever. And the lobotomized villains run the facility because they're no longer, they're docile, they're, it's crazy, it's crazy. Um, and that episode is part of like one of the ones that's like, this cartoon is not just meant for children. There's no way. It's definitely meant to try and capture the, or the, the audience's parents as well. And there's so many adult themes and jokes throughout the series. Like they, there's a lot of death, like surprisingly amount. Uh, the villains are just like crazy. They're trying to go out of their way to kill people and just like all this crazy stuff. And it's a children's cartoon again. Like they're, this Superman is lobotomizing people. <laughs> Um, even to the point where like Doomsday shows up on the planet and he lobotomizes Doomsday. <laughs> like it's crazy. Um, and I think that's one of the driving strengths of the cartoon. Like you, when you go back and watch it as an adult, you can still enjoy it because it does have such like an adult theme to it. Um, and I think last note before we wrap it up, the, or okay, second to last, the, my biggest complaint with a character adaptation is Doomsday. Um, so Doomsday shows up and he starts like just destroying stuff like doomsday should but then he starts talking and that's the part i didn't like about it is like doomsday should be just like the mindless beast that just is out of his way to go kill superman and in this one he's just talking he's talking about how he just wants to fight the planet and take over and fight the biggest guardians it has or whatever i think it was, i thought it was kind of dumb it was whatever i kind of didn't i didn't feel like it did justice to the character um so moving on uh, as I said in the beginning, this is supposed to be a segue to actual comic books or to get further into the genre. So at no point should this be ever used as like a point of this is how strong a character should be, right? Like this is not a solid continuity to like define what a character is or how a character should be. Um, certain elements of this cartoon were later adapted and refined in comic books. Like um, I still need to do some more research on this, but apparently before this cartoon, Jon Stewart was never a... Uh, a marine. He was never in the Marine Corps. He was never a sniper or anything like that. That was later changed with comic books after this cartoon debuted. Now, like I said, I still need to go back and verify that, but I found that uh, quote from somewhere. And on that note, um, things like weaknesses, like basically Superman gets hurt by basic anything and everything in the show, pretty much. The only thing that literally has no effect on him is like guns, small guns. Like big guns will take him down and stuff like that. Um, but anybody that has ever picked up a comic book in their life <laughs> knows that that's half the things that happen to Superman in this show would never happen to him in a comic book, uh, which is um, source material, which is like the actual how a character should be, right? No matter how good something in media is, the source material is always going to be how a character should be. Uh, I think that's important to note. Um, so kind of moving from that a little bit. Um, like I said, this isn't something to draw from continuity. This is a segue to get into the genre. And I think, again, I think that's important to know. And um, so when you're talking about characters, this, is, this shouldn't be the first thing you go to when you're trying to look for feats of a character. And um, just a little bit of trivia. Um, it was actually said by the either producer or the showrunner, um, or I think I forget the guy's name, but um, basically they didn't know which Flash they were trying to... They were trying to do so at the very last season when bruce wayne reveals flash's identity to the rest of the league that was like basically a last minute decision because the entire show they hadn't they didn't know which one they were doing they were just doing a flash character that's why he has elements of barry that's why he has elements of wally and that's why um there's an episode where he gets shot with something and uh, i can't remember the exact circumstance but during like his blackout he sees uh himself getting struck by lightning in the lab with blonde hair but as we see in the finale of the show, he's a ginger, which is Wally West. Um, so I just want to reiterate that because people love to argue about that on which Flash it is. But really, even the producers didn't know. And honestly, it could go either way. Because like I said, he's his flashback and things like that. So uh, just like a fun little bit of trivia um, if you stuck around long enough to hear that. Um, so if you enjoyed the video, um, just let me know. Um, if you want to give the cartoon a rewatch or you want to watch it for the first time and I influenced your decision, uh, again, please let me know. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this. I love the cartoon. I love rewatching it. And um, I believe next up, I'm going to go even further back and I'm going to watch the original Batman the Animated Series.
Um, look, really looking forward to that. And um, yeah, my next video will actually be over the Teen Titans because I recently rewatched that as well. Um, so if you enjoyed uh, the video and you you just enjoyed listening to me talk or whatever, uh, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.